Welcome back. Uh, today, I wanted to walk through some introductory econometrics issues uh, in hypothesis testing. Basically, how to read the information that you get from your standard OLS regression output. Uh, so I've got Stata open here, so uh, I thought we'd call up some data, get an example regression, and then kind of walk through uh, exactly what we're looking at. Uh, so the data set I'm going to call up here is from the Wooldridge textbooks. You can use the BCUs command. And we're going to call up the CEO salary data set, so we're going to use the command BCUs. And the name of the file is CEO sal one and so we've got 200 some odd observations uh, of salaries of different executives based on individual and firm level characteristics i get this just purely for example so let's run a regression with salary as our dependent variable uh, and then maybe have sales return on equity return on sales uh, and then we've got these various uh, industry indicators so let's put in the utility dummy variable so equal to one if the executive is running a utility firm so we've got our regression results we've got a bunch of coefficients standard errors t statistics so that's what we want to take a look at today so just a quick refresher right so when we have a regression model the point of hypothesis testing is to be able to make statistical inference from our single sample estimates onto the underlying true population coefficients. Right? Ideally, we want to be able to say with some degree of confidence or significance that the true coefficient is not zero based on the evidence that we see from our single sample. And a good way to think about this is we're going to be, at least initially, evaluating each coefficient estimate based on a two-sided alternative hypothesis test. Or the null hypothesis is that the true value is zero. And again, we want to be able to see if we can reject that null at a reasonable level of significance or confidence. And our method of evaluation is going to be that t statistic so the purposes of this discussion is not to go into the uh, underlying statistical theory uh, and the proofs of exactly why this works uh, and more importantly when it doesn't work uh, but just so you know the assumption that we're working with here is that we are in the gauss markov world of classical assumptions uh, so the ratio that we see here, this t statistic ratio of the coefficient estimate, the b1 hat, to its standard error will follow a an underlying t distribution. So we're assuming constant error variance, no autocorrelation, uh, proper specification, and uh, at least large sample normality of the error terms. Okay. But when we look at our regression results, that, of course, is where these t statistics come from, the ratio of the coefficient estimate to the standard error. And in order to evaluate what that t statistic means, of course, we have to compare it to the appropriate critical value. Right? So that's the point at which we can say we are enough standard errors away from zero in our estimate that we no longer believe that the true value is zero, that the true distribution is centered at zero. Okay, so uh, our choice then now is to make uh, our required level of confidence, right? That's going to be the alpha or the significance of our test. And by convention, we basically have three choices that we typically look at. 90% confidence or an alpha of 10%, 95% confidence, alpha of 5%, or 99% confidence, the alpha would be 1%. And since this is a two-sided test, we're going to be drawing our conclusion based on the absolute value of the T statistic. In other words, we could be different from zero in either direction below zero or above zero. So if the absolute value of our t-statistic uh, surpasses the critical value, we reject that null of zero and say, no, we don't believe that the true value is zero. We don't believe that that distribution is centered 
at zero. So the picture right, would look something like this, where once we, again, look up what the appropriate critical value is, we have kind of split up the possible outcomes into the do not reject region close to zero, right? And then if we're far enough away from zero in either direction, we're in the rejection region. So we think of the, the alpha or the significance in terms of the area under that curve, right? So if, for example, we have 90%, uh, we're looking for 90% confidence where we have an alpha a significance of 10%, that middle area, that one minus alpha is gonna be 90% and we'll have alpha over two or 5% in each tail. Okay. So let's go back and look at our example in Stata here. So we're, we've estimated the model. We've seen how we've calculated the T statistic. Now we've got to find the appropriate critical value and draw a conclusion for each of our coefficients. Now, the first step here is to figure out what the appropriate critical value is. And typically you are recommended to go to the back of your statistics book or your econometrics book and look at the uh, critical T table. Right? And it might look something like this, where we have a column of degrees of freedom. So that's again our n minus k minus 1, sample size minus number of coefficients estimated, minus one for the intercept. And then the rest of the columns are made up of different levels of significance. So in our case here, our n is 209, our k is four, right? So we have an n minus k minus one of 204. And our table doesn't have an entry for 204. In fact, we are somewhere down here at the bottom somewhere in between 120 and the asymptotic normal distribution, the bottom row uh, in the table. So it looks like we're somewhere between those values 1.645, 1.658. And we could uh, interpolate between the two and mathematically figure out exactly where we lie, but it turns out in Stata, uh, we can look up the exact critical value. So we're gonna generate this variable that's gonna give us the exact appropriate critical value. So in Stata, we'll use the generate command uh, and we'll call this, say the critical 10 two-sided. Let's make up a name that we'll, we'll be able to uh, understand what it is. Uh, and the function that's gonna give us this result, the area under that T distribution in the tails at a certain degree of freedom and a certain level of significance is I in the T tail. So it's the inverse of the T distribution. Uh, the, as you can imagine, the associated command, the T tail command, uh, if given a critical value or a T value, it'll give you the area, right? We'll come, we'll use that in, uh, in part two of the sequence a little bit later. But all we have to do is input the degrees of freedom, our n minus k minus one, which in our example is the 204, and then how much area is in the tail. So if, even though this is a two-sided 10% test, we're gonna put only 5%, right? So 0 0.05, that's how much area is in each tail of the distribution. So we hit enter and we have a new variable up here. And it's going to be the same observation, I mean, the same value each observation. So we can just call up the summary statistics and get the mean of that variable. And here it is, 1.652. And there it is, right in the middle there. So that's the exact correct critical value for our example. So now that we have our critical value, let's go ahead and see how we can draw our conclusion, right? So as we see our, for the utility dummy variable, for example, and that's a good a good choice in general for a two-sided test, right? You don't really have a preconceived notion of whether or not that's gonna be a positive or a negative coefficient. We just wanna know, is it different from zero? So we have that T statistic, the ratio of the coefficient, the negative 525 to the standard error, the 263, 
gives us that value of negative 1.99. So at 10% 10, 10 significance, 90% confidence, we can reject the null that that coefficient is zero. Our calculated t surpasses the critical value in absolute terms. So our coefficient is statistically significant in this case. So that's the two-sided test, which again, from the point of view of just deciding whether or not a variable should be included in the model, that's always going to be a good start. And the picture that comes along with that in this case, uh, again, we've got that T distribution. We've got our two rejection regions on the right-hand side and the left-hand side. And the cutoff point is our negative and positive iterations of the critical value. So we have 5% here, 5% there. And we see our calculated t here at negative 1.99 surpasses that left-hand critical value. So that's the picture of a significant coefficient, rejection of that null of zero. So the last thing to think about here is, well, what about if we have a preconceived theoretical expectation of what our coefficient should be, uh, and we want to conduct a one-sided test? that we don't think it's going to be negative, or we don't think it's going to be positive, and we want to focus just on one side of that distribution. And for the most part, this is going to be the more useful way to approach uh, hypothesis testing for individual coefficients. Right? Uh, another way to think about it is, regardless of expectations, if your model estimates a coefficient that is negative, say, we want to know, is it significantly negative? If we get a positive coefficient, is it significantly positive? Right? So again, just allowing us to focus in on one side of that distribution. So here the alternative right, is going to take on the sign that we expect to see. Right? So if we have, say, a one-sided alternative with a positive coefficient, we expect it to be positive, that is the alternative hypothesis, and the null will take on the other possibilities, zero or negative. So the process is exactly the same, except now when we look up our critical value, right, we're only going to be concerned about the area in the tail on one side of that distribution. Right? So the meaning of 10% or 5% is going to be a little bit different. We don't have to cut that significance level in two right, to get those critical points. So the picture, right, again, for a positive alternative hypothesis and a one-sided test, the alpha is all going to be the area under the tail here on the right-hand side. And then the 1 minus alpha, uh, again, is going to be everywhere else, including the left-hand tail. So here for a an example 10% significance, all 10% is in that right-hand side rejection region. So back to our example, uh, say we're looking at the coefficient on sales, right? And again, we would expect that to be positive. So a firm that has better performance, better sales, we would expect their CEO to be compensated for that. And in fact, we do get a positive coefficient, that 0.012, but is it significantly positive? So we see the calculated T statistic, the 0.0126 over the standard error for the sales coefficient, 0.009 gives us that ratio of 1.4. So now again, we've got to find the appropriate critical value. So as we saw before, the table isn't going to be super helpful because we're you know in between rows in that critical table. So we can go back to Stata and again use that uh, inverse t-tail uh, t function to call up the exact critical value. So let's uh, generate a new variable call this the critical, and let's do this again at 10%. So critical 10, one-sided, equals INV t-tail. And that's our degrees of freedom, still 204. And now, again, because this is the area under the tail, we're going to put in 10% instead of the 0.05, which again is split up into the two tails that we saw before. So let's call that up. Let's summarize that new variable there. 
and it is in fact 1.286 is our critical value. And so clearly we see our calculated value of 1.4 surpasses the critical value. So we can at 10% significance, 90% confidence, reject the null that our coefficient is zero or negative. So it's gonna be exactly that same process, coefficient by coefficient. It's up to you to decide the significance level Right, the confidence level that you need. Uh, but once you make that decision, look up the appropriate critical value, be able to make that conclusion. So in the next installment, we'll look at uh, interpreting p-values, and then we'll also look at interpreting uh, confidence intervals and plotting out coefficients and confidence intervals. So I hope that was helpful. See you next time.